You have been hearing a lot in recent weeks about those two big bills aimed at protecting voters' rights. Well, they failed to pass the Senate last week. This was a major blow to the president. Also, it was a major blow, a lot of will tell you, to voters who could now face challenges, new hurdles at the polls during the midterms this fall. Let's bring in now New Jersey Senator, friend of our show here, Cory Booker. Uh, Senator Booker, always good to have you here. Tell folks out there who you, a lot of you have been screaming, democracy is at risk. So tell me what now right. is and the step forward? Well, I just want the folks to know this is about uh, access to the polls. There's this lie out there that there's in-person voter fraud. We know scientifically that that is about as common as a strike of lightning, getting hit by lightning. We have states in America now that, for example, blacks in Georgia, Texas are waiting eight, nine times longer in black communities than in white communities. This is about equal access to the polls. And in states that have a history of this kind of discrimination, now uh, uh, able to do it uh, willy nilly. And, and that's problematic. And so the answer for me is, we had these big bills. Most people couldn't articulate what was inside of them. Let's pull out different pieces and show America. Do you want a nation that gerrymanders? Both people on both sides of the aisle said that's wrong. Do you want a nation that has all of this dark, anonymous money pouring into our campaigns? Let's pull that piece out. Look, man, I, I know our history. Uh, American history is a perpetual testimony mm. to the achievement of the impossible because when Goodman, Cheney and Schwarner died in Mississippi, when uh, we saw uh, uh, people getting beaten back on the Edmund Pettus Bridge like John Lewis did, people thought these bills were impossible. The longest mm. filibusters in the Senate are around such civil rights legislation, but they overcame. If they didn't give up, I'm not going to give up. And, and we're going to call to the conscience of our country beyond partisanship to say, hey, should uh, Native Americans, what's happening in places like Montana, have these obstacles to vote that other people don't experience. And, and this is about the basic idea that in this country, we should be making voting easier and not more difficult, especially for disabled Americans or veteran Americans or African Americans. This is about one person, one vote in this in this country, and we can join together in that value. Well, it sounds like, uh, and maybe that, that is a good point, our history should give us uh, hope because we have been down some of these roads before. Let's turn now to the President Biden. One year uh, in office now, uh, approval rating um, has been dipping, and we've uh, seen one at least 43 percent approval rating. Can you tick off the things? Uh, kind of just list them: the successes in this past year. Yeah, we can't forget what this, the, that the president took over in an unprecedented crisis. Our economy was in shambles. We were losing millions of jobs at the time, uh, and we didn't have one shot in the arm. COVID was still uh, out there. And so what did he do? He rallied together some of the largest bills in American history to save our small businesses that were on the brink, uh, get hundreds of millions of dollars to keep our restaurants open and venues, uh, our schools and our hospitals, and then uh, started building our economy back. In one year, he's created more jobs uh, than the last three Republican presidents combined, and he is still uh, doing things to make an investment. And then he passed the biggest infrastructure bill in American history. It put uh, what Eisenhower did even in a, in a shadow uh, that's going to help us repair roads and bridges, invest in access to broadband and, and more. So his list of accomplishments is long, and I appreciate the president is about purpose and not popularity. We don't want to just say successes and failures, but uh, but what are the things that he hasn't quite uh, gotten across that goal line um, or some of the things that, that flat out he wasn't able to get done and won't maybe be able to get done at all? Yeah, I know people are calling it a social spending bill, but these are the things that are in Build Back Better that we should start naming because most Americans on both sides of the aisle are for them. So let's name them. One is the child tax credit, which is actually the biggest middle class and working class tax break uh, in our country's history. We got it for one year, which cut child poverty in half and got more Americans taxpayer dollars back to them. Uh, he wants to extend that. We're going to fight for that. He wants to drive down prescription drug costs. Americans on both sides of the aisle desperately want that. That's something he's going to fight for, and we're going to join him as Democrats in the Senate. He wants to make uh, child care more affordable. Uh, so the, some people think these are social spending things. I say these are what we as Americans all stand for, is empowering our children, helping working families, and making sure we are driving down costs at the time that folks are suffering.
And finally, I have to ask, of course, you're on the, uh, the Foreign Relations Committee. You are certainly uh, entrenched in, in this, these topics, but in this in particular, when we talk about what's happening in Ukraine, uh, uh, tell um, Americans right now what they should think and what they should be prepared for when they hear that thousands of U.S. troops have been put on high alert for possible deployment uh, to possibly get involved in an area where there could be, uh, and some anticipate, uh, conflict. We are this great Western nation that is trying to be a light unto other nations, joining with our NATO allies to let Russia know this is unacceptable. And should you cross that line, we are going to bring sanctions on you like you have never seen before. And we are going to equip and prepare and try to help uh, the Ukrainian people defend their democracy. So this is the tension we have right now. I do not believe we should be committing American ground forces, but I believe right now we should be diplomatically uh, and through economic pressure doing everything we can to avoid uh, uh, another conflict in, in Europe, uh, the likes of which we have not seen uh, in, in a very long time. Senator Booker, we always appreciate you answering the call and spending some time with us on GMA3 here. It's good to see you, all right? Thanks so much, and we'll certainly see you soon. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.